My name is Nathan DeVrio, and today I'll be presenting Smart Poser, a work I complete with my co-authors Vimal Mullen and Chris Harrison on estimating pose with a smartphone and smartwatch using ultra-wideband, or UWB, and IMU data. Um, yesterday we showed off a demo, which I hope many of you got to try. So the ability to track a user's arm pose can be useful in a wide variety of interaction contexts, ranging from tracking form in sports to physical rehabilitation, context-aware assistance, and occupational safety. Many people already wear smartwatches. However, these devices often know more about their users' legs, lungs, and heart than they do about the arm that they're worn on. Identifying the mentioned applications and acknowledging this gap are what motivated us to create our system, Smart Poser. So Smart Poser is a software-only system that uses UWB and IMU data from a smartphone and smartwatch, devices that many people already own, to track a user's 3D arm pose. So our goal is that users can wear and use their devices in the same way they're already used to, put their phone in their pocket and wear their watch on their wrist, and we could enable an entirely new interactive feature, arm tracking, with just a software update. So when identifying ways to improve wearable pose tracking, we noticed that in prior work, orientation data from worn IMUs has been the best way to track pose with a wearable approach. Recently, many smart devices have begun integrating UWB into them for nearby localization. Past research in non-wearable setups has also shown promise for tracking pose with UWB beacons wirelessly. Thus, we hypothesize supplementing IMU data with inter-device distance measurements obtained by time of flight from UWB may improve performance through a fusion approach. So here you can get a glimpse of how well our system's tracking works. As mentioned, we take the distance derived from UWB between a phone and watch as our core feature, and then supplement it with data on the orientation between the two devices obtained from their IMUs. So here in the middle you can see our features, and on the far right is the 3D joint key points of the arm that we predict. So under the hood, our system is taking raw UWB data and passing it into an LSTM that corrects errors in distance ranging. The corrected UWB data is then passed alongside the relative orientation between the two devices into a second LSTM that estimates the 3D joint key points for the elbow and wrist. The fact that we only use relative orientation is important because it enables the system to continue working even when the user moves their body around. Our model is also lightweight and has been tested and run on an iPhone with less than one millisecond per inference. So to supply the data to our model, we created apps that use on the devices that use Apple's nearby interaction API to acquire distance with UWB. So this is a special API that's made to work with the U1 chip found in Apple devices. However, it can also work with custom hardware and third-party devices, which is actually something we tested in the early stages of the project. So a key challenge with this particular UWB implementation, and a lot of UWB, is that it requires initiating and maintaining a session to continue reporting distance data. This session can sometimes abruptly end for different reasons, such as devices going out of range, or even things like body occlusion or erroneous data. So in our system, we created a state monitoring loop that can restart the session if it ever ended, However, this is one of the challenges of using UWB. Another challenge was on, on the iPhone, UWB is actually optimized for a fixed field of view cone out of the back of the phone due to the internal antenna design. So when in the pocket, we actually notice interesting behaviors that when you have poses within that field of view cone, you can obtain higher fidelity data and even 3D angles of arrival in addition to just distance. So we initially tried taking advantage of this better data when available, however, ultimately found that the field of view of poses was too narrow to make practical use of it. Not to mention, users sometimes put their phone in a different orientation or backwards in their pocket, so you might not be able to use this. In the future, a better antenna design may unlock more of this capability. So one way we were able to markedly improve our UWB data was by passing it through a correction module trained on ground truth data from Connect. So as you can see in this graph, for some poses, like putting the arm far above the head, there's greater occlusion or distance from the pocket, and the error in the raw data shown in blue drastically increases. 
However, by correcting for the data for such poses, which you can see in orange, we were able to drastically reduce the average error by as great as 85%. So to evaluate Smart Poser, we conducted a two-part user study where we had 10 participants perform a series of 20 terminal arm poses in a random order, and then repeated this process for a total of 10 rounds. This procedure was then run again on different daily activities instead of gross arm motions. Importantly, we continuously collected data as participants moved between different terminal poses in the study. So for example, if I was presented this pose and this pose, we would continuously collect data as participants move on their own between the two. Thus, with the random ordering of 20 poses, there are actually 190 possible pairwise transitions we captured throughout each study part, not just single static poses. So here's a clip showing arm tracking performance when performing some of those different daily activities that we captured in our study. So you can see that instead of just standing still, users were actually moving their body around to perform different tasks like vacuuming and incorporating organic arm movements. As mentioned before, we predicted the 3D joint positions for the elbow and wrist and found that in the best case, which occurred when training on combined data from both parts of the study, our median error was 11 centimeters for the elbow and wrist combined and 13.3 for just the wrist. Compared to prior work, this performance is significantly better than wrist tracking from Mullen et al's IMU poser and marginally better than Shen et al's arm track, and we also enable new features such as the ability to operate on the go without recalibration. Looking at the benefit of UWB correction during the study, we also saw that correcting UWB improved correlation with ground truth connect data and the air improvement was over 10 centimeters greater for the gross motion part of the study, where users performed more dynamic arm poses with greater occlusion and separation between the devices. So if we visualize that spatial error of the wrist joint positions, you can see some of these tough spots. So wrist positions that put the wrist far away above the head, so it's farther from the pocket, or even behind the back of the phone, there's, not as, there's greater error because the line of sight between the two devices is no longer good. Finally, we also performed an ablation analysis on our study results to quantify the benefit of adding UWB data over purely IMU. This analysis showed that adding UWB data drops the median air by three centimeters for the elbow and 3.4 for the wrist, roughly a quarter improvement. Considering how past models have differed in performance by fractions of a centimeter, we believe this validates the benefit of UWB. So for the last part of the presentation, I want to quickly show some demo use cases where we envision Smart Poser could be used in the future. One is for physical rehabilitation. So after a rotator cuff injury, a background process could run on a user's watch that tracks each stage total arm movement, duration lifted, maximum extension, and elevation reached. More interactively, a Smart Watch app could guide people through a Tai Chi routine automatically advancing next instructions once recognized, as well as providing feedback on performance during the routine. Arms are also involved in many physical exercises, thus tracking the arms could be used for fitness-oriented applications. Finally, a worker's watch could vibrate to help prevent injury by alerting them when they lift boxes above their head away from a safe range. Um, thank you. This concludes my presentation, and I'll now take any audience questions.